to uh, how to have this anointing of love that I hope we all hunger for the anointing of love that we want to have this anointing of love okay and then so what is the anointing of love Romans 5 5 because the love of God has been poured out into our in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us so the Holy Spirit can pour the love of God into our hearts so that's what the anointing of love is and when people live in the love of God and hunger for God and love God all the time and believe that God is loving them it's easier for them to experience the love of God it's also easier for them to pray for people to experience the love of God so I hope we all hunger for the love of God instead of just power or healing and then Romans 8 38 for I'm persuaded okay let me uh, okay here for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights or nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord so nothing neither death nor life or anything else can separate us from the love of God God loves us all the time but many people don't experience the love of God because they don't uh, they don't have a close relationship with God and they have problems so they uh, they don't experience this love but when we love God all the time and believe that he's loving us that we believe that anytime we pray to him anytime we love him he is very very happy to bless us then we will uh, then it's easier for us to experience the love of God and actually nothing can separate us from this love and then number three we can experience God's love easily and we can help people to experience God's love so when we live in God's love and believe in his God, God's love and love him all the time and put in him in the first place in our life then we can experience his love uh, much more than before and then number four we will live as beloved children of God we will teach to bring people into God's love so when we live in God's love and love him all the time then we live as beloved children of God that he really loves us and then we will be able to teach and bring people into God's love so we can teach the love of God and we can bring people into the love of God you know only the love of God can change people totally sometimes people experience healing and they are not necessarily changed they like the healing but it doesn't necessarily touch their heart but when they experience the love of God and then we explain to them what you are experiencing is the love of God then they have a stronger motivation to respond to God and love God and then we can train people how to experience his love more and more how we can open our heart and hunger for God and then experience his love more and more okay people who will be motivated to love and serve God by God's love so God's love can motivate us to have a close relationship with him and to serve him and then when we pray for people more people can experience God's love and their lives will be changed so if we live in God's love in a strong presence of God's love and and really appreciate his love and appreciate everything about God and see the love of God then when we pray for people more people can experience God's love and experiencing God's love is more important than experiencing God's power or healing because God's love can change people so it's more important to experience his love than to experience just power or healing so how to build up the anointing of love first believe that God loves us all the time believe in the promises of God's love in the Bible and remember God's help for us which has shown his love for us so first believe that God is loving us all the time as the Bible has promised he loves us all the time he is caring for us he is thinking about us he can never forget it forget about us he always remember us and love us so so believing that will bring us into God's love and also remember God's help for us which has uh, which also shows his love for us you know there are so many times that we experience his help 
when we remember that how God helped us, how God saved us from trouble, how God comforted our hearts, how God changed our heart and draw us to follow Him and love Him, and we remember all this as the expression of God's love. When God draw us to follow Him, that's God's love showing to us. So we really appreciate that. Say, Lord, it's so wonderful that you love us, and I can remember how you have blessed me, and I remember all those actions of yours as expression of your love. So we can see God's love from the Bible, and also from all our experiences from God and also from nature. Even when we see the food, we eat the food and see uh, the beautiful things around us, the beautiful nature, we can see God's love there. So whatever we see, we say, God is loving us. God is so wonderful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So when we live in love like that, then it's easier for us to experience love ourselves and easier for us to help people to experience His love. And then when we pray, believe that God is loving us and is very happy with us when we love Him. So when we pray to Him, He is very happy. When we love Him, He is very happy. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, but it, as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So when we love Him, He prepared for us things we never imagined. So we can always believe, yes, God is loving me, God is loving me, and then when I love Him, He is very happy and He for sure to bless me. Okay, and then three, the whole person is motivated by God's love. So if our whole person say, God is so wonderful, I want to love God, I want to respond to God, I want to really uh, uh, live in His love, then our whole life will be changed. When we are motivated by God's love, we're not motivated by money or anything else, but we're motivated by God's love to love Him. And then God is very happy with us. So this uh, mutual love, that God loves me and I love Him, and when I love Him, He's very happy and for sure He'll bless me. And then when we minister to people or pray for people with pure motives, when we just want to bless people, just want to care for people and love them, believe that God is very happy with us and we serve God with the motivation of love and bless them instead of doing it for our own glory. So when we pray for people, we have, if we have a pure motive, then God is very happy with us. Whenever we serve God with a pure motive, not to get money, not to get anything, then God is very happy and then He will bless us. If we do it for our own glory, if we just want to show off the power, you know, some people push people to fall down when they pray for people, that is not doing it from love. It's doing from uh, self-glory. But when we pray for people and we really want people to experience God's love, then God is very, very happy. God really wants to bless us. So we believe that anytime we do it out of love, anything we do it out of the love for God, God is very happy and He'll for sure bless us. And number five, when we minister to a group or pray for a group of people, lead the people to believe that God is loving them and lead them to enjoy God's love. When a whole group of people believe in God's love and enjoy God's love, it is easier for them to experience God's love. So when we ex uh, minister to a group of people, when we preach and when we pray for them, lead the people to believe that God is loving them. So whenever we serve God, whenever we motivate people to do anything, we always motivate them with the love of God. We say, God loves you very much. God wants to bless you. So when you pray to Him, He is very happy. And we say, God loves you. And when we obey Him, He is very happy and He will for sure bless you. So we always motivate people with God's love. When we motivate people to turn from the sins, we'll say, uh, God loves you. And then when you follow Him, then you live in His love. And then you will be blessed by Him all the time and you won't fall in the hands of Satan. So when you respond to God and repent of your sin, then God is very happy. So we always motivate people with God's love and tell them that when they respond to God, God is very happy. God loves them first. And then when they respond to God, God is very happy to bless them. So 
we want to tell them about God's love and motivate them to follow God with God's love. And then when a whole group of people believe in God's love and enjoy God's love, it's, then it's easy for them to experience God's love. Then they can experience God's love uh, from time to time, even when they pray themselves. Now, when I first showed that, um, when I first showed that uh, 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 video earlier, that lady said that, then from then on, every time she prays, she experienced God's love. So I hope that we, we can live in God's love all the time. And, and that came from the teaching of love and that we ourselves live in God's love. That's very important. And God's love is real. He really, he really loves us. We don't have to earn God's love. He loves us already. And then when we respond to His love, then we are connected to His love. When people don't respond to His love, when people don't accept His love, then they are not connected to His love and they are not blessed by His love. So we, we can see many Christians, they, they, they know that God loves them, but they don't believe that and they don't really follow that. It's just a head knowledge and then they, won't, they don't uh, experience much love. Okay, so um, now uh, now I have talked about how to pray to experience the Holy Spirit. I'm going to explain this now before we talk about that. How to experience God's love. Uh, how to love God all the time. is worship God in spirit and in truth. That a whole person, the whole spirit from our mind, from our soul, from, you know, from our soul which includes the mind, the will and our feelings. So we worship God with all our mind, believing that God's, the Bible, uh, the promises in the Bible are most wonderful. God is full of love. Following God is the best. The mind agrees with everything in the Bible. And then the will, I want to follow God. I want to obey God. And then feelings, that we have good feelings toward God because God is a God of love. He is so wonderful. So we want to... Um, have good feelings toward Him, that we like Him very much. Now, if someone loves you, you will like that person. And God loves us more than anyone else. We can see God's love in His creation, in the food He created, in nature, and in the work of the Holy Spirit to draw us to believe in Jesus, and in the salvation of Jesus, and in the Holy Spirit guiding us and giving us peace and joy. All this we should think about all the time and then we can see God's love. And then we learn to like God. And then, then any time we pray, we can experience His, His love gradually. You know, first we experience His joy and peace. And gradually we can experience His love. So I hope we all hunger, hunger for this love so that we, you know, so that we are motivated by this love and then when we pray for people, people can experience God's love. So we ourselves must put down all the wrong motives. If any of us serve God for money or for our own glory or for power, if we serve God with these motives, then God is not pleased with us. But if we just have a pure heart and say, when I love God and love people and want to bless people, and I do it with a pure motive, then God is very happy with me and He'll for sure bless me. So I hope we put all our hope, all our trust in God. We rely on God totally for everything. So we just forget about, you know, how, what's the result of the ministry. We just, uh, we enjoy God and then whenever we see people, we tell them how wonderful God is. And then people can experience His love more when we, serve with freedom and no burdens when we say that God loves me all the time God is wonderful God is so good and then when we serve God like that then uh, then it's very easy for the Holy Spirit to work through us to bring love to people and then people can experience His love more so first we open our heart more to love God when we pray to God it's like the Holy Spirit ascend to God Lord I hunger for you I worship you I want you, I need you. Like in the first uh, two, uh, in the video, the two ladies that I pray for, the first one was overwhelmed with, with love of God and the joy of the Lord. And the second one too, that uh, 
that she, she fell down and then uh, before I touch her and then she told me that af after that then every time she prays she experienced the love of God and so we we all can live in this love and right now I'm going to lead you in a prayer to help us to to experience this love okay so please stand up and enjoy God's love oh Lord Jesus we thank you we appreciate you so much you're loving us right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you can take away all our burdens you're blessing us right now you're with us all the time Lord we want to trust in you we want to worship you we love you above everything you are the best that can happen to us when we have you we have everything Lord you're loving me hallelujah hallelujah yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so oh Lord Jesus help everyone here to experience your love touch us with your love Lord Jesus touch us with your love let your love fill our heart. Take away all our burdens. Help us to believe that you are loving us. Help us to believe that you are with us right now. You have the most wonderful plan for our lives. Lord Jesus, we are so blessed to have you. We are so blessed to have you. We want to love you. We want to follow you. We want to enjoy your love all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give us joy. Give us joy and love, Lord Jesus, so we can enjoy you all the time. We can enjoy our lives and we can enjoy ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope you all live in the love of God so that your teaching and your prayer will be filled with the love of God. Okay? Now, we still have time to go to the next session, uh, which is also a short one. How to love God, love people, and love ourselves. Now, you might be surprised, why love ourselves? Now, the Bible says, love uh, people, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, we love people as we love ourselves. So, we, we need to learn to love ourselves too. Because many people don't love themselves, so they don't feel good about themselves. They don't, they don't believe that they can do great things for God. They don't believe that they are important. When they don't believe that they are important, then they will have low self-image and they will be unhappy about themselves. Then they live their lives like uh, orphans instead of children of God, instead of prince of God. So we want to live... We want to love God and love people and love ourselves and know that we are precious. But we love God above everyone and we love people as we love ourselves. Okay, what happens when people cannot love themselves? So what, what if they don't love themselves? They, then they will accuse themselves easily. Then they always say, oh, I'm not doing so well. I have all these problems. And then they despise themselves. They look down upon themselves. And three, they feel hopeless about themselves. They, they think that they are hopeless. They cannot do anything. Number four, they amplify their failure and neglect their success. So when they have failure, they will keep thinking about it and then feel bad about it. And then they neglect the success. When they do anything good, they, they neglect it and forget about it. They don't think they can do great things for God. They don't believe that. But actually, we all can do great things for God when we, when we uh, love ourselves, when we believe that we are important. They don't think God delights in them. So when they follow God, they don't think God is happy with them. When they pray, they don't think God is happy with them. They always say, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. And then they give up easily. It's easy for them to give up on themselves. 
and give up serving God, and they don't enjoy life, and they cannot enter God's perfect plan. So, so I hope we all see that it's so very important for us to, to be able to love ourselves, because we have been created by God. We are very special. So we say, I'm a special person created by God. I'm not proud of myself. I'm proud of God. But everything I have came from God. So I'm happy of all these things God, that God has given me. So what happens when people cannot love others? If, if we cannot love others, what will happen? Then they will accuse others easily. They will accuse other people and say, you're not doing so well. And they always tell people about what they've done wrong. And then they despise others. They look down upon other people. And they feel hopeless about other people. And they say, these people have no hope. And they amplify their failure and neglect their success. If they've done anything right, they don't remember it. And just think about their failure. And they don't think that they can do great things for God. They don't think other people can do great things for God. And they don't think God delights in them. They don't think God likes them. Now we need to learn to say, our members love God. I really, I'm very happy about it. My members are willing to come and worship God. I'm very happy about it. And God is very happy. Our members are willing to offer uh, their life and money to God. I'm very happy about it. And God is blessing them. So whenever we see them doing good things, when I see them doing evangelism, I'm very happy about it. I, I rejoice in that. That way, then we tell the people and then the people feel motivated. But many people will just say, well, there are other things you don't do so well. They, you haven't done well enough. Then they're just looking at the failure, the weaknesses. But we want to look at the strength of people. You're doing well. You're doing well. You are improving. Okay, and then six, they don't think God delights in them. And they don't think that God will like them and they give up on people and they made, make life difficult for others. They will yell at people, hurt people, and make people feel unhappy. And they don't help people to enter God's plan. So when people don't love other people, then there are all kinds of problems. So we need to learn to love God, love people, and love ourselves. What happens when we love God, people, and ourselves? then God is pleased with us and will bless us. And people and we ourselves will have a healthy self-image and enjoy life more. Then, so when we love God and love people and love ourselves, then we have a self, healthy self-image that we are important in the sight of God. I am a prince or a princess of God. I am important and God has a wonderful plan in my life and then we can enjoy life more. Three, people and ourselves will be raised up to a higher spiritual life and can serve God better. So we can be raised up to a higher level and we can serve God better. And then ministry will be more joyful and fruitful. So our whole life will, be, will improve. Our ministry will become better and our, will be more fruitful. Okay? And then how to love God. First, trust and rely. Now there's two a few uh, four main words trust and then close relationship then delight and then obey and serve okay so loving God is trusting and relying on God Psalm 16 verse 2 apart from you I have no good thing so everything every good thing that I have came from God every good thing I have came from God apart from you I have no good thing everything good came from you. So the first thing is we trust in God. God will help me. God will bless me. God is happy with me. So we trust in God all the time. And then number two, have a close relationship with God. And how do we have a close relationship with God? Read and apply the Bible and pray often and respond to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So we read the Bible and apply to our lives and we believe what the Bible teaches us. And then we pray often and spend long time praying, Lord Jesus, I love you. I want to be with you. The more we stay in the presence of God, the more we'll be blessed by God. And then respond to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit guides us to repent, then we repent. The Holy Spirit guides us to love God, then we love God. 
Whatever the Holy Spirit guides us to do, we'll obey. And then three, delight in God. Isaiah 58, 14, Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. So when we, when we delight ourselves in God, that we're happy with Him, that we think of all the good things of God, and we feel happy about God, the source of our happiness came from God, that is delight in God. Then God will cause us to ride on the high hills of the earth. Then He will cause us to go to a high place that will, our life will go higher and higher. That will become uh, important when we delight in God. So it's important to delight in God and really rejoice in God and thank God for everything and like everything about God. And then obey and serve Him. 1 John 5.3 for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandment, that we keep His commandment, then we are loving God. So how to love God is to love and rely on God, trust and rely on God, have a close relationship with God, delight in Him, and obey and serve Him. Okay, how to love people and, and ourselves. Respect and honor people as precious. 1 Peter 2.9 but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who call you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So we are a chosen generation, generation of people cho chosen by God and a royal priesthood. We are, we are priests of God to bring people to God and bring God to people and a holy nation and His own special people. So we, we are very, very special. So we want to honor ourselves and honor, honor people. But many people don't, have not built up the, the habit of seeing good things in people. They don't see that people are precious. They want to abuse people. They want to make use of people. But we want to say, you're wonderful. God has a wonderful plan in your life. When, we, when you love God, God will bless you. When you follow God, God will bless you. And God is happy with you. And I'm happy with you. So we want to honor them and respect them. And especially our, our spouse. We want to say, you are the special gift from God to me. And you are special to me. You have been helpful to me. And I want to bless you. I want to make you happy. I want to do things to bless you and help you. So we want to respect people and honor them. They are very special. And then two, how to love people and God uh, and ourselves. Delight in people and God adorns us with Christ's righteousness. As Cr God adorns us with Christ's righteousness. So we delight in, in people as God delights in us. As God put God's, uh, Christ's righteousness upon us. Isaiah 61 10, this is a very important Bible verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful to, in my God, for He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with the ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. So, So God is always, you know, when people trust in Jesus' salvation, then we have the righteousness of God. And then we'll be clothed, cover me with the robe of righteousness, that He'll uh, clothe me with the garment of salvation. So that's why I say rejoice. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Now we see that these people are happy because of God. They, he rejoice over God because... He has, God has clothed me with the garments of salvation and He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. So God has covered me with the, uh, clothed me with the garments of salvation. His co salvation covers me and His robe of righteousness. Righteousness means obey God. And this robe of righteousness came from Christ who has obeyed God in every way. So he's, He put the robe of righteousness of Christ upon us. So we look like Christ in sight in, in front of God. When God looks at us, uh, it's like He's looking at Christ and He's happy with us. 
So as a bridegroom deck himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, so when a bridegroom and a bride gets married, that's usually they're clothed most beautifully on that day. So when we have the righteousness of Christ, then we are like a bride or bridegroom that will be uh, very beautiful in the sight of God. So I hope that every one of us believe that God is happy with me. God clothed him, us with his righteousness when we trust in Jesus, when we honestly trust in Jesus as our Savior and repent of our sins, then He cover us with His righteousness and then we will be adorned like a bride or bridegroom and God is very happy with us. And so we should look at ourselves like this, that we are adorned with the righteousness of Christ, that Christ is very happy with me, God is very happy with me. And also all the people who sincerely believe in Je Jesus, they are also adorned with the righteousness of Christ. God is happy with them and I'm happy with them too. So we need to learn to say to people, I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to be with you. I'm happy to be able to do anything for you. So this honoring people is very important and not to make them feel unhappy, but to encourage them. How to love people and ourselves. And then three, do not accuse. When they have sinned or done something wrong, we can guide them to repentance. We can ask them, do you think you know, this is right, what you've done? And then what can you do? And how, what can you do that God is pleased with you uh, and forgive you? So if the person says repentance, yes, then you say, yes, repent. And feel sorry for your sins and trust in Jesus uh, to forgive our sins. Then God is very, very happy. God is very happy to, to bless us. So we don't accuse people. Now some people, uh, when they talk to the spouse or when they talk to other Christians, they talk to the members, very often they accuse them. They say, you didn't do, you didn't cook your food well, you didn't, you didn't do things well, you didn't, love, you didn't love God well, and then you didn't pray much. So very often people just look at uh, where they fail. Now, if they have failed, then we'll say, you know, God loves you and He wants you to go back to Him. Do you want to repent? When you repent, then you are blessed by God. Do you want to repent? So we want to tell them the grace of God to attract them to, for, uh, to repent and, and turn back to Jesus. So instead of accusing people and say, you're useless, you're, you're, you're a terrible sinner, you're doing all these things wrong, there's nothing good about you, this is we should not say things like this at all. We should be uh, encouraging people, telling them that God loves them, God cares about them, God wants to bless them, uh, and God is happy with anything they do for God with a sincere heart. When they do it with a sincere heart, God is very happy. So Romans 8.34, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, it's also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who has made intercession for us. So who is he who condemns? No one can condemn us because it's Christ who died for us and then he's also risen from the dead and even at the right hand of God and he has made, he also made intercession for us. So he's praying for us. So no one can condemn us. And then rejoice when people repent or obey God. Luke 15, 7, I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So even when one person repents, the whole heaven rejoices. So when we see people repent, we say, I rejoice with you. I'm so happy that you sincerely repent. Then some people will say, what if they don't really uh, repent? Then we'll encourage them and say God is very happy when we repent and so when you repent God is very happy do you want to pray sincerely to God and say I have sinned against you please forgive me please wash me clean with the blood of Jesus okay and then number five appreciate what people have done according to God's will instead of counting what they have not down, done so when they've done anything good, we appreciate that. And don't say there are other things you, 
uh, you haven't done well yet. Like to our children, when they've done something good, then we say, you've done something good, wonderful, wonderful. And we don't want to say, he, he's, he tell us, I've done this. And then we say, well, you haven't done the others yet. So we want to encourage them by saying that, I have seen what you've done, I, it's wonderful. So Mark 9.41, For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, and surely I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. So if anyone gives you even a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ. So we, we do it to Christians or to people to bring them to Jesus. So whenever we do it to people, uh, because they belong to Christ, or we want to bring them to Christ, then God is happy with you and then He'll remember and He'll reward us. So we want to appreciate people and reward people uh, with praise. You know, sometimes we can say, you're wonderful, we applaud them, you're wonderful, you're improving, you're doing well. Instead of saying, there are other things you need to improve. Okay, so I hope we all will uh, will encourage people and that is loving people and loving ourselves too. So these few points also for ourselves that will respect and honor ourselves that we are important in the sight of God even though we have failures, God is still happy with me. And then God has clothed me with His righteousness so God is pleased with me. I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. I'm co covered with the righteousness of Christ so God is very happy with me. And then don't accuse ourselves, even when we've done something wrong. Now, sometimes we have a tendency to accuse ourselves of things we have done wrong many years ago. And actually, whenever we repent of our sins, God is very happy to forgive us. And then we rejoice uh, when we repent. So, first we rejoice when other people repent. When we repent, we'll say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you help us to repent. I thank you, Lord that you're happy with me, and I'm happy with myself too, when I sincerely repent. Now some people will say, what if you're not repenting sincerely? Then we do it sincerely. We say, Lord, I'm really sorry for my sins because I, I have offended you. Okay, and then, and then appreciate what we have done. When we have done something good, we have prayed for people, we have blessed people, we have done evangelism, we say, I'm doing well, I'm obeying God. This is not being proud, it's just saying, I acknowledge that God work, has worked in my life and now I'm changing and I thank God I'm changing and God remembers that I've changed and God will bless me. So I hope that uh, we will all treat ourselves with love and honor and appreciation so that we enjoy ourselves and we enjoy serving God and enjoy everything we do. Okay, so we'll, we'll stop here and then have one hour of lunch lunchtime and God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll have a prayer. Lord Jesus, help us to live in your love and help us to love ourselves because we are very precious. We are very precious in the sight of God. We are very important that you have a special plan in our life. When we obey you, when we love you, you're always happy and you always bless us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's so wonderful to be a children. Lord, help us to experience your love. We want you. We need you. Help us all learn to reach out our spirit to God, that we can think of ourselves as flying to God. I enjoy you, Lord. I enjoy you. I love you. I adore you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.